In this lesson, we're going to show you how to simply get your clips from the browser to the viewer, mark your in and out points, and put your clips into the timeline where you want them. In our last lesson, we had put all our clips in a bin. Now I'm going to open that bin, and right now they're in alphabetical order, and I would like to have it in time code order the way it was shot on the tape. So I scroll across the browser until I get to the media start time column. So I click on the media start time column, and it reshuffles the clips into time code order instead of alphabetical order. Any column you click on top of will organize the clips in that order. So now we're ready to edit. I'm going to double click one of the icons next to the name of my clip so it loads in the viewer window. Now I'm not going to try to cut something that makes sense, but just want to show you the tools and how to play things in the timeline. Here I can scroll the playhead of the viewer across till I get to where I want to go. I can also use the frame by frame wheel to get to exactly the frame that I want to mark my endpoint. When I get on exactly that frame, I hit the mark in button in the viewer. And a triangle facing right appears at the playhead position. Then I can continue playing my tape until I can find the exact place where I want to mark an out point. I can also again use the frame by frame wheel to adjust to exactly the frame that I want to mark the out point at. Once I'm on exactly that frame, I hit the mark out button in the viewer. This puts a triangle facing to the left at the playhead position. Now that you have marked your clip, you will see the duration in the top left of the viewer. This clip is 6 seconds and 17 frames. Now I want to put this clip into the timeline, so I hit the red button in the canvas, which is the overwrite, and a message appears. For best performance, your sequence and external video should be set to the format of the clips you are editing. Change sequence settings to match the clip settings, yes or no? Now I'd say in most cases you're going to want to hit yes. This means that your sequence settings will match your clip settings and you won't have to render your clips as soon as you drop them into the timeline. Even if you're going to output into a different format, it's better to edit in your native format to reduce the rendering time. So I hit yes and the sequence settings change to match the clip settings and the clip is put into the timeline. Now that I have made my first edit, I'm going to double click another clip in the browser and load it into the viewer. I'm going to scrub my playhead across the clip and use the uh, scroll bar or the frame by frame wheel to find exactly the frame that I want to start on. And then I'm going to click the mark in button, which will put a triangle facing right at the playhead position. This is where I want to start this clip. So I go ahead and click the marking button and you see the triangle facing right at the playhead position. Then I play my clip to find the out point. Once again, I can scroll the playhead in the viewer where I want to be, or I can use one of the frame by frame wheel or scroll bar. And when I get to the exact frame I want to mark my out, I hit the mark out button and the triangle facing left appears at the playhead position. I can see the duration of my clip at the top left of the viewer. So with no marks on the timeline, your playhead in the timeline becomes your default endpoint. What this means is that when you hit the red overwrite button in the canvas or the yellow insert button in the canvas, the clip will go exactly where the playhead is in the timeline. So I go ahead and hit the red overwrite button in the canvas and you can see that the clip appears next to the first clip in the timeline. You will notice there is one V1 blue track and two A1 and A2 green tracks. The blue represents video of the clip and the green represents audio of the clip. So now I'm ready to double click my third clip in the browser and load it into the viewer. I scroll my playhead across the clip just to see what it is and I'm gonna put my playhead on exactly the frame that I want to start the clip and mark my endpoint. Then I'm gonna go ahead and drag the playhead to the frame where I want to stop the clip and mark my out point. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the red overwrite button in the canvas and lay the clip in the timeline. So as you can see it's pretty easy to lay clips in the timeline one after another by just loading them up into the viewer from the browser, picking your in and out marks, and hitting the red overwrite button. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click another clip in the browser and it loads in the viewer. I go ahead and scrub the clip and I realize this is not really the clip I want. I can just go ahead and um, double click another clip in the browser and it will replace the clip in the viewer. Now I use my frame by frame wheel to get to the frame where I want to mark my endpoint. I can also scrub it with my playhead. So when I get to exactly the frame that I want to be on, after a little tweaking, I mark my endpoint. I can play the clip and get to where I want to be with my out point. 
and I mark, and of course I'm gonna tweak it a little more with the frame by frame wheel, and then I mark my out point. Now up until now, we've been laying clips one after another in the timeline, but a lot of times you want to insert clips between clips, and here's where we can use the insert button. Now being that your playhead is the default in point when there's no marks on the timeline, if we want to insert between clips, we have to be able to move the playhead from clip to clip. And here's where we can use the previous and next edit buttons, which are located at the ends of the playback controls in the canvas. So when I hit the previous edit button, you can see the playhead snaps back clip to clip. You can tell you're on the first frame of a clip by this right angle mark on the bottom left of the canvas. When I hit the go to next edit button, the playhead snaps forward clip to clip. So this is how I can line up my playhead to where I want to insert the clip in the timeline. So if I'm inserting between clips, I want to make sure that I'm on the first frame of the clip I want to push over, indicated by the left angle mark at the bottom left of the canvas. It's important to know that when you do an insert edit, it's going to take the frame you're on in the timeline and everything else to the right and push it over to make room for the new media. So with my playhead on the first frame of the second clip, I go ahead and hit the yellow insert button located in the canvas and the clip inserts itself into the timeline, pushing everything else over to make room for it. If I want to resize my timeline so I can see more of the clips that are in it, I can use the scroll bar at the bottom of the timeline and pull on the ends of it to either contract or expand the timeline as needed. I can also use the timeline resize tool located to the left of the scroll bar, which I prefer actually because it keeps your playhead in the timeline view. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click another clip in the browser and let it load in the viewer. I'm going to move my playhead to the position where I want to mark an endpoint. And I go ahead and mark my endpoint. I let it play to find my out point. I stop it and I mark my out point. Now since my playhead is my default endpoint, I'm going to use the go to next edit button to move the playhead to the end of the sequence where I want this new clip to go. Then I go ahead and hit the red overwrite button and the clip is laid into the timeline at the end of the sequence. Now I go ahead and double click another clip in the browser and load it into the viewer. I move my playhead to where I want to start the clip and mark an endpoint. I play the clip so that I can find my out point. I stop it, I find my out point. Now I can also grab the in and outs that I have already made and move them in the viewer to remark the in or the out point. So I'm grabbing the out mark and I'm dragging it back to where I really want the out mark. And I can see exactly where it's going to be as I click down on it. But when I let it go, I see the view at the playhead position. But don't be fooled, wherever you move these marks, this is the media that will go into the timeline. And it doesn't matter where the playhead is. So now that my clip is barked, I'm going to go ahead and hit the red overwrite button. And you can see that the clip is now laid into the timeline as the last clip. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click another clip from the browser and load it into the viewer. I move my playhead to where I want to mark in and hit the mark in button. I let it play until I can find my mark out. And I stop it and hit the mark out button. Now since I don't want to put this at the end of the timeline, I want this to be the fourth clip in the timeline. I'm going to use the go to previous edit button to snap my playhead to the existing fourth clip of the timeline. I can see by my left angle mark at the bottom left of the canvas that I'm on the first frame of the clip that I want to push over. Remember, when you hit the insert button, it takes the frame you're on in the timeline and everything else to the right and pushes it over to make room for the new media. Now I go ahead and hit my insert edit button in the canvas and the new clip is inserted as the fourth clip, pushing everything over to the right in the timeline. I can scrub my timeline a number of ways. I can click on the playhead where the numbers are at the top of the sequence and pull it left or right to where I want to be. I can also pull the playhead in the canvas and that will also move the playhead in the timeline. Where I get to where I want to be, I can just hit play in the canvas and view my sequence. Now that you know some of the basic editing techniques in Final Cut Pro, you can start editing a rough cut of your project.